years ago, I went to South Africa, or in 2009 rather, I went to South Africa for the first time. Um, I had been saving money, planning to go, wanted to bow hunt South Africa, was so excited, went there, and the best thing that happened is I met, my, not my first PH, but the first PH in camp that I met was Donnie. And, and he'll get an opportunity to share a little bit about who he is in a minute. I met Donnie, and, uh, and we've built a friendship ever since that time in, in 2009, which has been tremendous. Um, he's really a part of our family, and we're a part of his family, and it's been incredible. So that was the best thing that happened. The hunt was spectacular. I went there to hunt five animals on a package deal that I had. I ended up shooting 12. Um, a little crazy, overspent to say the least. But then what happened was a nightmare. There were four of us on this hunt, and we were told that the costs were going to be this amount of money. And what happened is then before we left, the safari owner said, oh, you owe this, and you owe this, and you owe this, and you owe this, and you owe this. Um, and he said the booking agent knew all that. And, of course, he told us none of that. And so we were all about $4,000 to $8,000 upside down um, from what we were told it was going to be. Um, nothing you can do. So we all took care of business and made things right. Um, but on the plane, on the way home, I literally sat on that plane. It's quite a long flight. Some of you know that. And I wrote out a business plan uh, for journey hunts. And literally on paper, birth journey hunts on that way home. And I said, there's got to be somebody that wants to take hunts let people know what they are and do it with integrity and character and actually take care of people. And we launched that business in 2009. Um, fast forward to, to today, and we have sent hundreds and hundreds, literally of hunters all over the world to hunt all kinds of different places. But we've, spent, we've sent well over 150 hunters to South Africa since 2009. It's my personal favorite place in the world. I've been there this trip this July for me will be my 21st trip since 2009 to South Africa. I love it. There is nothing like it. It is an unbelievable place. And we've partnered with incredible partners. Since 2014, we've exclusively gone to Dornran Hunting Safaris. And we have Donnie with us. And Donnie's going to tell you a little bit about himself. And here's what you have to understand. You have an opportunity tonight to interact directly with a safari owner. Don't waste that opportunity. Everybody has questions. We'll have time for that. Everybody has concerns. Everybody has thoughts. You can get all that answered tonight. So, Donnie, tell them a little bit about who you are. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm Donnie Krieger. So, Dorenrand Hunting Safaris is family-owned. Uh, our family owned it for the last 24 years. So, it's been quite a long time. Me, personally, have been in the hunting business for the last 15 years. Uh, my wife, I have a wife and two kids. Uh, my wife is with me in the business. So, Duran to give you an idea, Duran is 6,000 acres about. Uh, and then we have another 30,000 acres that's in concessions that we can go and hunt. So, if we don't have the specific animal you need on our property, we can go to one of our concessions. Then we do family trips. We do a lot of husband and wife trips. A lot of father and son trips, like these two guys that's coming over in July. So there's a lot of variety of stuff that we can do and customize hunts and safari trips that you want to do. Yeah, so that's just in a nutshell, something about us. Yeah, here's what I'm gonna tell you about Donnie and, and his family, is they are absolute people of integrity. Um, what I love is when we have a group there, when you go, I've gone to some really big safaris in South Africa and I've had great trips there. But the reality is when you go to Dornrand, it is going to be just you and your group. There's not going to be 10 different groups. You're not going to be interacting with a ton of people that you don't know. When you go there, it's going to be just that group. And that's who's going to be in camp. And that's who is going to be there with you. And we do everything in a family-oriented way. Everything is done right. It's first class all the way from food to lodging to <clears throat> hunting to sightseeing and to all the side tours for those that don't want to hunt. They're all world class and you'll have an incredible experience. So I'm going to show you another one minute video and then we'll explain a little bit about how you can hunt South Africa.
Bill, that last guy talking is Jason Zulke from our board. Oh, really? You can't tell with the glasses and the headgear on, but he's on our board at Camp Freedom. So Jason was over there last time three years? Yeah, just before COVID. Three years or four years ago. So, um, so, so here's the deal with South Africa. There's two ways that you hunt South Africa. And there's a lot of confusion. And it's not complicated. There's confusion because people try and do things in a way in South Africa that make it look to you as if this is going to be your price. And then there's all these add-ons. So what we did is we simplified it. Two ways you hunt South Africa if you're going to hunt with us. The first way is through packages, which are in the booklets. Some of you have them. Some of them don't. They're on the back table. In those booklets, you'll see package pricing. Package pricing is everything that is included in your stay. Everything from the time you land at Johannes Airport until you return to Johannes Airport. There's no surprises. There's no VAT tax that isn't in there. There's no transportation to and from the airport that some guys now are charging $750, $950 um, each way. Um, there's none of that. That is an all-inclusive package for you, for the number of days you're staying, and for your hunt. That is the first way that you can hunt. And because you buy a package, there's a little bit of discounting in that pricing because you're locking in and saying, I'm going to hunt these five animals. That is one option. People always want to ask, what happens if I can't get an opportunity at one of the animals that are on my list? I will tell you that that has rarely ever happened. In fact, I think it's twice in my entire history. And it's very simple. If the animal that you don't have opportunity for on your list that you didn't have opportunity is $1,300, you can move that $1,300 to a different animal or you can get refunded on that cost, um, on that value. So it's very simple, but I will tell you, you will see those animals. You will have opportunity at those animals. It's, it's quite incredible. So the, first, so the first opportunity is packages. The second opportunity is a la carte. You pay a daily fee, which is $375 a day, and then you hunt any animal on the list as you see it. You can hunt any animal that you want. And the cost is there. It's on a price list. Your PH will have a price list. I almost guarantee it in his pocket. And he will tell you what the price of that animal is if you decide to shoot that animal. Um, the advantage of hunting a la carte is just that. You can, as you go, you can decide what you want to hunt. You can decide what you like. You may have never seen a red hearted beast in your life. And you see a picture and you might say it's ugly. And then when it's standing at 20, 20 yards out in front of you and you have your bow in your hand, you might instantly say, I want that. And then you say, what does it cost? It costs this and I would like to shoot that. Um, the great thing about a package is you can add to your package. So you have your package, you could still a la carte some additional animals if you want to. When you're hunting a la carte, like I said, it's just that. You can hunt two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've had people hunt, one guy hunted 40 animals in, in a two week span of time. Um, Khalid literally took 40 animals during that time. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, however, it was a lot of fun. So, so that's the two ways in which you hunt South Africa. And again, it's very simple. Our packages, over the years, we've refined those packages, kind of getting a feel and an understanding of what people are looking for. There's a package from $4,300, <coughs> and then they go all the way up from there. And we can customize a package to what you want. You may say, there's no package, that's really what I want. Tell us what you want, and then we'll look at that, and we'll go down that list, and we'll, we'll, we'll form a, a package just for you. So that's an overview of the hunting of South Africa. And this, this is unique tonight because we've got many of you, actually, that have hunted with us before at Dornran. And so I want to ask why we have you. Um, before we go to questions, I want to ask if any of you would share a little bit about your experience at Dornrand and what you experienced while you were there. Anyone? Frank, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'll try to be short. And um, I just want to say how to give you a little bit of background here. My name is Frank. I am a teacher by profession, so I'm not a multimillionaire. Um, I, uh, about, it was 2019, I was out in my hunting club stocking pheasants with one of my club members, and I just casually mentioned that. I'd like to go to Africa someday, but that's a dream. And he said, well, he says, I have this friend, his name is Matt Geddes. He said, you should, you should see him because he's good. he could find you a trip that you could afford. And I thought, yeah, yeah. 
Then shortly after, Stefan, who's sitting over there, uh, a vintage hunter himself, uh, was through a party. It was this time of the year at his house down in Bethlehem. It was cold. We're a little lucky this time. Yeah, I, I said to, uh, to Donnie, how do you like our winters? Because when we're down there, it's his winter, and it's nowhere near as cold <laughs> as this. <laughs> but um, I'm a hunter all my life. I mean, I started hunting when uh, my father took me out to the woods with a break open 410 shotgun I could barely even hold. And I remember he used to try to injure a rabbit so I would get a shot at it. But I grew up all my life hunting Pennsylvania, uh, small game, mostly deer. But one thing I want to say to anybody contemplating going to Africa, everything you know about hunting big game here in Pennsylvania, forget it. First of all, if you had that kind of experience when you're, when you're, <clears throat> you're sitting in your stand, or in this case in Africa, you hunt a lot from blinds, you think you see a doe, and you go, wow, I saw a doe today. You know, or what did you see? I saw a doe today. Because some days you could hunt, 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 and never see anything. When you go to Dornrand Hunting Lodge, and there are many thousands of acres of property, you will see animals, one after another after another. And I remember my first experience. My uh, my uh, PA said to me, "All right," he said, "I'll tell you what." a good animal to shoot. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. But the first animal I see is the one I'm going to shoot. That's the way I'm used to it. <laughs> well, well, this uh, uh, Impala, I don't see one here. Uh, an Impala came by. We were in even there five minutes. And I'm all excited. He said, don't shoot at that. I said, what do you mean? I said, that's a perfect trophy. He said, you're going to see plenty. And every time one came by, I said, I want to get this. And he said, oh, wait. And he said, after a while, after seeing maybe about 10 of them, he said, go ahead and take that one. And I did, and that was the very first animal I ever shot in Africa, and it was a beautiful animal. Um, when, I, when I contacted Matt, this was 2019, we got ready for a, a trip. I gave him the deposit. Um, we talked about it. That was the height of uh, the COVID. And that year, Africa was closed. As a matter of fact, I think Botswana was was probably the uh, the most affected area in Africa at the time, and Botswana is a, a neighbor of uh, South Africa. Botswana and uh, Rhodesia, well, not Rhodesia anymore. What is Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe yeah. the north. And uh, in any case, uh, we postponed it a year. And uh, next year came around. Well, I was kind of happy we postponed it because it just gave me a lot more time for inspiration and to think about preparing for this trip and trying to imagine in my mind what this trip was going to be like. I'm a, I'm a pretty seasoned traveler. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying that, that I have some background in travel. I've been to Europe probably about 20 times. I've traveled every country in, in Europe, Western Europe, some of Eastern Europe. I've been to Central America, every country down there. Drove my motor home down to Mexico. So I wasn't... To, anticipating that this was going to be that much of a great thing, because I'm used to seeing a lot of different countries. Well, let me tell you, we flew there. We flew on United Airlines. Um, it was the uh, 787 Dreamliner, the most modern jet that they built. 15-hour trip. It was a beautiful flight. I, there was leg room. There was food. I mean, it was just, I thought, I was thinking 15 hours. Oh, suppose I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And, and... <laughs> Sure enough, it wasn't just a comfortable trip the whole way over there. We got to Johannesburg Airport in the middle of the night. So here I am, I still haven't seen Africa. We get into a van, like a 10-person, 10-passenger van. They even had to have a trailer to put all our luggage and, and, and our guns in. Five more hours on the road, it's still dark. Well, we got to the lodge so late, everybody just went to bed. and. I was too excited to go to sleep. I went to my room. I didn't sleep. I just sat there and waited for the sun to come up. And let me tell you something. The sunrise in South Africa is out of this world. It is blood red sunrise, blood red sunset. And you know why? You're practically in the Kalahari Desert. It's all, it's all red soil and sand. And, and, and if you could just imagine looking at that sunrise, it, 
just coming up, red sky, and a herd of... <laughs> I timed it that way. <laughs> you know, and a herd of either Cape Buffalo or giraffes galloping across the, the, the uh, silhouette, their silhouette going across the sky. It's everything you imagine in a movie about a safari, and then some. Well, we were so excited when the sun came out, nobody slept. We wanted to go out hunting right away. So that's, that was the first day, but we, we did really hunt the first day. We sighted in our rifles. Maybe some of the people did, I don't remember. But um, and I, then we met our, our uh, each, of, each of us had a um, professional hunter, a PH, and a tracker. And this professional hunter I had, hmm? I'm so sorry, that I had was, he, he was so knowledgeable, you would think, oh, he's a hunter. This guy knew history, he knew about, he could tell you the whole story of the African National Congress, about the party era, about Nelson Mandela, everything, every question I had, he had an answer for. This is what we were doing while we we're in our uh, blinds. So I told you how, how the first day went. But in any case, in that time between 2019 and 2020, I had a lot of opportunity to look at, um, to do some reading up on it. For example, always in my mind was, well, hunters back in the day, African hunters, they had double rifles. I thought, I'll never be able to afford something like that. You know, they rode camels. You know, well, I didn't have a double rifle. For any of you who hunted over there, you know that anything you shoot a deer with here, you could take down a plains game animal there. But Matt had told me that we, we also have a la carte. And even though I don't know if I wanted to shoot a Cape Buffalo, but they were there. <laughs> no, not, that's not a, that's a Cape Buffalo. No, go. that's a Cape Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, I'm going to bring a rifle to handle that. So I obtained a, a Winchester Model 70 in 375 Holland and Holland Magnum. That's the rifle that's understood to no. be the ultimate rifle the over in Africa. <laughs> And um, that's what I brought. And as it turned out, I was told that's the best rifle for any of these games because they are a whole lot tougher, tougher skin, tougher composition than any of our deer or even our elk. So the, the, the hunt began and I thought, Bob, I was worried about nothing. There are no mountains here. It's the bush belt. It's a, it's a form of the desert. It's thorn bushes, acacia bushes, and they're gentle slopes. So I did all that working out to get myself in shape for nothing because really it's a piece of cake. You, unless you're <laughs> tracking an animal all day, don't worry about. It. I was I was 70 years old at the time. That was my that was my 70 year <laughs> birthday present to myself. I thought I'm going to have a heart attack. You know, no, no. And I was built up to it. You know, putting in the right, breaking in the right hunting boots and walking every day, carrying my rifle. And my neighbors like, where's he going? You know. <laughs> But um, it, was, it was there, and uh, well, uh, just to sum it up, I don't want to go too long. Uh, we hunted mostly from blinds. You can also, um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're lazy like me, you can hunt out of a blind. You're going to see animals, lots of them. You're going to want to shoot everyone. Uh, you are only probably limited, like, like Matt said, you might, I, I went with the package, but you are only limited to how much you want to spend with your, with your um, game fees, and your taxidermist. And, uh, let's see, I wonder, oh, I just want to mention uh, uh, Donnie's, the lodge, Duran Ran. Uh, his father-in-law is the owner of it. He was such a fantastic host. They all were, they all were. Donnie, his wife, his wife is also a PH. Um, they have PHs working for them. They have some from other, other uh, outfitters. It's, it's a first class lodge. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I, I'm not getting anything for telling you this. This is just my experience. <laughs> what? Uh, you forgot about the zebra? The, uh, the one for I talking didn't... tonight? The, uh, the one I'm going to give you for talking tonight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. Uh, my, my PH did show me a nice big zebra. And I said, I used to have a horse. That reminds me of my horse. I can't shoot that. But I think I'm, I wish it would have because it would have made a nice blanket. Uh, but. Um, uh, the, the lodge is first class all the way, absolutely. The best food, and I'm a gourmet, the best food, those cooks, they're, they're classically trained chefs, as good as anyone in Paris, 
or Rome or any place in, in, I've ever eaten in Europe, the food is out of this world. And we, we spent every night in a kind of a pavilion area with a, with a, um, a fire ring, and then they had an enclosed bar. Well, Donnie's father-in-law discovered that I like scotch. And there wasn't just J&B there. He discovered that I like good scotch, and there was always the best there every night. <laughs> Same with wine. I'm a wine drinker. I told you I travel. Well, I'm Italian, but I travel all over Europe every night. And Donnie's father-in-law has a connection with South African Winery Reserve wine every night. And I don't know if you know about South African wine. It's out of this world. It's so good. So. If you're not a wine drinker, bear with me. But um, the, the the hosts were fantastic people. South Africa is a wonderful country. It's it's a it's an independent republic. It's a it's a uh, modern. It's got modern and, and traditional. The people are out of this world. The Africans, uh, two languages they speak in this part in uh, Limpopo, Afrikaans, which is a derivative of uh, Dutch. And everybody speaks English, everybody. So you're not at loss to try to explain something to somebody. And, um, and the, the, the Skinner and the Tracker, they're some of the nicest, nicest, cordial, friendly, funny people make you feel like you really belong there. So uh, oh, I guess one last thing is a taxidermy. They got, a, they got a taxidermist there, and you will save by having your taxidermy done there and imported here already complete and um, and, I, and I just got I just got mine a little a couple months ago awesome. and, and it's perfect it's the best mounts I've ever seen I had three shoulder mounts and two Europeans and there's I'm, I don't know if these people did the same thing here but they really did a professional job and um, that's it. I'm going again. I don't know when, but I'm going again. July 14th, Frank. July 14th. Okay. <laughs> okay. Frank, thank yes. you so much. Sure, sure, Matt. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Any of the other guys want to share that have been there with us? Anybody? I can say a few words. I'm going to stay here and get that back. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, basically, what Matt and Donnie and Frank, I mean, I mean everything is first class. The time you get there, uh, you feel like family. I mean, you're at home. It's like you've known these guys forever, and you just met them. Uh, the hunting is top notch. The animals are top notch. Food, lodge, I mean, just everything. Uh, anyone who's not gone, I highly recommend it. Uh, don't be afraid. Do it. You only live once. It's worth every penny. I've gone twice. Once to one ring. Uh, I'll be booking my second trip to them now. Hopefully for next year. And just go have a good time. Again, these guys are not lying. I mean, everything they say is true 100%. That's it. Awesome. I work on cars for a living, so I'm not a teacher. I'm not good at talking, but sorry for that. You guys stand by everything you say is true. So. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. All right. So here's the deal a la carte packages, you know that. Question that came up to my mind while Frank was talking. Ron, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's right, keep from doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, one thing that came up, you, you, there's several different ways that you can hunt. You can hunt in blinds, and the blinds mostly are really cool because you're ground level and sometimes even down into the ground, so the animals are at eye level with you. It's a really awesome experience. Uh, very cool. So you can hunt from blinds. You can hunt from safari vehicles. It's legal in South Africa to hunt from safari eagles, safari vehicles, not eagles. It's never, <laughs> never legal to hunt eagles, um, but from safari vehicles. So you could be driving in that vehicle up on top like you've seen in movies. Um, you drive around, you can spot animals, and you can hunt from the vehicle. You can get off and spot and stock. A lot of different opportunities to hunt, a lot of different ways. Um, and, and we have elevated blinds also where you can hunt from elevated blinds and do that too. Uh, a couple tree stands even that we can do there too. So lots of opportunity. What we'd like to do is make sure you're comfortable um, with the, the, the process and what happens. What I do is take you from the time you book your flight all the way until your game animals are returned, your trophies are returned. We walk you through the whole process. Whether you want to do your, your 
taxidermy like Frank did over there. We've got an unbelievable taxidermist who you will meet when you're there. You can do it there. Or we can bring back what's called raw preparation. It's your head, hide, and skull prepared for mounting here for your taxidermist here. You can do it both ways. Doesn't matter. We have it down to a science. As far as taking firearms, I will give you the booklet. Kelly will have it, not me. It will be highlighted everywhere exactly where you need to fill it out. Don't do anything except what, where it's highlighted, and you will have no issue going through customs. It's an easy country to bring firearms and bows in and out of. It's never an issue. We've got that, and if you don't want to do that, you can rent the firearm from Donnie. It's $50 a day. Um, to rent a firearm and they've got very very good firearms so that's an option also if you don't want to take one with you so what we'd like to do is open this up to questions and then we have a couple drawings for a couple exciting things that we're going to give away any questions at all about anything hunting at Dornran, hunting south africa bob how long are the shots generally under 100 yards this is different uh bill knows bill's been to the cape i've been to the cape I'm trying to think maybe a couple others of you have been to the cape ron's been to the cape You've been to the Cape. There, you're hunting a lot of, of large open areas, a lot of open field areas, and you can have long distance shots. Here, this is the Feld. It's thick. Um, so you're going to be 100 yards and under, unless you want to say, hey, I want to take a 400 yard shot. And then we'll find areas down roadways, down paths, down large openings where you can do that. But for the most part, it's 100 yards and in. So three to nine is okay. Absolutely. Three to nine, you'll be fine. That's a non issue. Anything that you use here, you can use there. Donnie likes 30 cows and up. That's his preference. We have lots of guys, though, that bring 270s. Some guys bring 6.5s. You know, I'm not going to recommend that you hunt a kudu with a 6.5. Um, can it do it? Sure, with a perfect shot. The problem is what will it do when it's not a perfect shot? You want a little bit more a heavier grain bullet and, and honestly, a slower bullet. I've learned a lot about that over the, the years in South Africa because of how strong the hides are on a lot of these animals. So slow is good, actually. Heavy is good. Um, that's why they love the 375. They'll shoot dikers and steam bucks with 375s um, because of shooting through brush and, 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 you know, branches and thorns and all kinds of stuff. So that's an option too. But uh, again, anything that you hunt with here, you'll be, you'll be fine there. Have Questions, you, go. Have you had anybody bring a muzzle loader? We have. We had a well, long time ago. The issue was with powder though. The, yeah, to get your powder. Yeah. Is, there a a is there a distinction between real black powder and Part substitute? There, there isn't in their mindset when okay. you're bringing it in. We would have to get, you would have to have them find powder on that yeah. side because bringing it is a, and, is and a no go. I need to have a special license <coughs> to get that, and that's not that easy. To get. Yeah. yeah. So I would suggest not on a muzzle loader. So, Matt, you, you said the thieves cover the animal. What about then caping them out, processing them to ship back to us? Is that extra? Yeah, so what your costs are in your package or in your a la carte, your daily fee, is everything that happens on Dorn Ren. After that, there's three costs. There's three different costs that you'll have. The first cost is the taxidermist there. Whether you do mounts there or whether you do raw preparation, you'll have your costs with the taxidermist there. Um, just to give you an idea on raw preparation, you'll be about $120 to about $220 per animal if you do raw preparation. It's really fairly inexpensive. Um, to do that. So your first cost are the animals with the taxidermist there. Second cost is shipping. Um, shipping um, to the United States has gotten tricky, frankly. You know, they are trying to do everything they can to make it difficult for you to bring animals in particular from Africa. But again, we've got great pathways. We've got great avenues. We've got it figured out. I kind of hit my door. Yeah, it used to be, and that's through our system, but it used to be uh, 120 again to about 220, and that goes by weight or volume. If it's full mounts, it's by volume. If it's raw preparation, it's by weight. It equals out almost exactly. But those costs used to be about 120 to 220, 150 to 220 per animal again for shipping. It's gone up obviously with fuel costs and some of that. But uh, the third cost then is the US. The U.S. has to get their hand in it on, on our end. And so when it comes in, there's a fee for USDA. Do you remember what your fee was this year? It's over 1000 Okay. Said, he said it was over 1000 It used to be 750 all the time. And I think they bumped it in 2021. Um, so those are your three charges. The great thing about those charges is you can delay your taxidermy work. You can put off 
any of that for up to a year if you want to. You can also have it, like we just were with a client on Saturday, and, and they hunted November, or we talked to them on Saturday, they hunted November, their stuff's ready to go. So, I mean, you can get it as fast, or you can delay it if you need more time to generate some income to do that too. You can make it work either way. But we'll walk you through that good, good uh, that whole process. That's a great question, Bill. Others. How close is the local fire department? <laughs> well, you know, we already have we already have an internship set up for Hunter if he ends up there already at the local uh, PD. I mean, at the local FD. Um, so we'll we'll have something ready if he ends up there. So. And then for the other one, is there a golf course close by? There's actually a, there's actually a, where Donnie got married. Uh, and no, down the other one on the river. There's a beautiful golf course. We had lunch there, so there yeah. is a golf course. 20, 20 minutes away. How is it? Yeah. 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 It's not apple there. Yeah. Yeah, there are, and there's crocs on the river there too. So you don't want to chase balls into the water there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, my balls would be in the water. There you go. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. There was a there was a young lady with a crossbow. Okay, what kind of speed do you need if you want to hunt crossbow? Any crossbow you use here is fine. Donnie also has a crossbow that we took to him. He has a crossbow there if you want to use one that's there. And my, um, my extra one there too. It is. Oh, okay. So there's two there, you know, that are there. And we've had everybody use from from you know bear <clears throat> archery to ravens and everything in between in crossbows. So really, anything you use here, you will be fine with there. And and. Look, bow hunting is phenomenal there because animals there are controlled by water and feed. And so all of the blinds have things set up so that you will have shots 30 yards and in with bows because they're coming to water sources and food sources. So it's phenomenal. But rifle hunting you can do in an array of different ways. So. Now are those, I know those suppressors, are they your guns with suppressors? Yes, yeah. yeah. They're totally legal in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Like my son, with the one he shot, he's five years old at the moment, oh, he's six now, but when he was five years old, last year he shot a zebra and an impala with 308, with a suppressor, 180 gram bullet. Wow. I mean, no kick, just... Yeah, and so. you can take suppressors also, as long as you have proper paperwork. We've had plenty of clients take them, so you can take them. And almost everything you have is suppressed, almost. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. yeah. So he's shooting a 22, it's unbelievable. Other questions? We don't want to. I don't want to rush you guys. I don't. I want to make sure you get questions answered if you have them. You can't take pistols. Too. Yeah, you can. Yeah, Ron has shot almost everything with him. He shot a Cape Buffalo, a giraffe, a uh, blue wildebeest, golden wildebeest. golden wildebeest, all with a pistol with forty-one. Springbucks. Right. Yeah. But it has to be a revolver, right? You can't bring all yes. Yeah, yeah, it does need to be a revolver, Bill. Yes. Yeah. Other questions. For non-hunters, this is one. If you're going to bring a non-hunter, it's $200 a day. And again, that's everything from the airport until you return to the airport. That's food, lodging, everything with the exception of your excursions that you go out to do. What's, and, to do? what's that? What's to do for a non-hunter? There's all kinds of opportunities. Yeah, we have, uh, we, we have, there's a predator park for the ladies. There's a spa that you can go for. There's a Ongel and Popa River. There's a boat cruise you can do. Um, the golf course is there. There's a one-day trip to a big five um, park that's about two hours drive away. So there's a lot of options uh, to keep everyone busy. Yeah. What's the laundry facility? I mean, how much clothing do we have to bring? Exactly. Three, three changes of clothing, and you'll probably only wear two of them because they get washed every night, and you have them clean the next day. <laughs> but three, I tell everybody, bring at least three, three clothing that you want to hunt in. Here's what you're going to wake up to. You're going to wake up to 38 to 42 degrees. It's going to be 70 by midday. So like zip off pants are great. You know, a light jacket. Now, two years ago, it was cold when we were there. When we were there, it was cold. It was like, it was 30, 32 when you woke up and it was only getting up to maybe 55. Um, so what's that? Frost. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So you might, you might want a jacket, but normally it will not rain. It is 0% humidity. And, uh, and it's just gorgeous. The weather could not be better. You want to hunt, really? You can hunt year-round, but ideal is end of April till end of October. That's a great window. Most people like to go May, June, July, August, September. And then what is the taxidermist accepts in terms of payment? 
You can do credit card once you're back here. She doesn't, here's the great thing. Jeanette is fabulous. She doesn't even require any deposit at all until your stuff's done. Once you are ready with your trophies, if you give her the go ahead, yep. she does them and then at the end, she sends you a bill. Yeah. She doesn't even do require. We, we have a, we have a, well, a friendly partnership with her. So yes. she, she looks after us. So you could do a currency transfer. Yes. Bank. Yeah. Or use a credit card and pay for stamps. Yeah. And there you can pay cash or you can pay by credit card. Credit card, there is a fee of 3%. 3%. But it's MasterCard or Visa card. Yeah. We don't do Discovery. I know Discovery, that's a problem. Or American Africa. Express. Or American Express, but MasterCard or Visa, Visa cards work. Food is spectacular. I lose 10 pounds before going because you will do gain we weight eat there. Barbecue? Yes, yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Love the antelope. <laughs> And you do get to eat a lot of meat. Yeah, Diet yeah. sure. is a good meat. Yeah. It's all good. I like it all. <laughs> now, going back to off the safari truck, are you just driving out to the bush and then stalking? I mean, I know you really don't stalk there, but yeah. <laughs> the, the, well, it's it's yeah. all up to you. Okay. So so, like Frank said, he, he enjoyed the blinds. He hunted from the blinds. So it's all up to the hunter. If the hunter wants to go out. We drive spot animals because it's such a big area. You need to drive out to save some time. Spot animals, get off and do a stalk on it and see if it's successful. Uh, that's an option. Or just drive if the opportunity, if, my, if there's a big kudu bull standing and you wanted the kudu bull and it's, it's giving you the opportunity, that's going to be a good option to take it from the truck. So it's, it's, it's all up to you. It's, it's, it depends Diesel how, how you want to. Diesel safari. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Spotted, <laughs> spotted stock. That, that's the thing about these animals. I love it because it's extremely challenging. Everything eats these animals, you know, and so they are constantly on alert. Um, and it's tough. It's definitely tough. A lot of fun doing that. Spotted stock too will delay you yep. several things. Yeah, we have a lot of buffalo on the property, so you walk with, we have to check the pH, just always check the wind. Uh, you have to because you don't want to walk into a lot of buffaloes, so you have to be careful. But it's fun. It's, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Or just make sure you can climb a tree very good. Did, did everybody? Did everybody sign in over there? Because if you didn't sign in, you're not in on the drawing. Good sign in if you're going to. Tell me what the last number is then when you sign in. <laughs> Any other questions while we're waiting on them? Anything? If you if you tell us you want you're interested in a column, we can put send a package together and they're usually much cheaper than the church. And we can hunt together. Yes, you can go two on one. Absolutely. You could go three on one if you want to in your scenario or not. <laughs> That's all right. We can do that. He's giving me a neck massage. You notice I don't feed him. But that last one. Don't stare. That's all right. Don't call me. Don't call me. Number 14. 14? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, the first thing that we're going to give away, we are going to give away one free Impala female to be hunted in 2023. So that puts a little pressure on you. <laughs> I need somebody. Bird just won. They're a little slick, so make sure you get one. If you draw your number, it doesn't count. You go by the field. Number nine. Who was number nine? Yeah. Chase. Chase. Who's number, number nine? nine? David Della Della <laughs> There you go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the next thing that we're going to give away, pretty exciting, is an Impala Ram. One Impala Ram. Here's one of the coolest things that you see over there is you'll be sitting at a blind and you'll have 50, 100 impala come walking in. I've had mornings where I've counted over 400 animals. Wow. Um, you, you never know what's going to happen and it just makes it so much fun 
because you don't know what's coming in. You don't know whether Cape Buffalo's coming in, whether a passing through cheetah's coming through, whether a lion passing through, whether a giraffe's coming in, whether a herd of zebra. You don't know what's going to happen. And it's always so much fun because of that. Are the racks fairly uniform throughout the, throughout the herd? Or does, it, does the pH tell you that? The pH way? will tell yeah. you. You okay. can rely on your pH. And yeah. if your pH says it's a good one, you, you know yeah, it's going to be a trust good one. Is there a premium for an exceptional one? No, not at all. At our, our pricing all the same days, except on the sables, we have a, a difference. Yeah. Uh, but on all other, like um, buffalo, no size limit, animals, any kudu, any impala, there's no size What's limit. What's an average kudu? Average kudu between 